Hello everyone and welcome back to the 3D Printer Vlog. This is your host Michael and today we are continuing on the wiring harness. What I've started to do is I have started cutting out the extra leads from this power supply. Just a standard ATX computer power supply with extra leads. One mod I have done because it has a switch back here. Since it has a switch back here, I went ahead and just took the green cable and just crimped it to a ground so it'll always be on. So I've cut out like all the 3 volt, 3.3 volt and the, the 5 volt leads and like the negative 12 and everything else. So all you do is just keep the yellow which is 12 and the black which is neutral. I'm gonna have them go to a bus bar and then of course to a relay using little uh, connectors like so. These guys here. So I'm gonna go ahead and take care of that there and I'll cut back when I finish. Okay, so I went ahead and got the power supply taken care of here. Whoops. Good thing I don't have a warranty on this thing. So, yep, just got it hooked up to this here bus bar. And also, I got two essential tools I needed to purchase to make this wiring harness thing a heck of a lot easier. One of which is this super awesome bendy ruler thing. There we go. As you notice, it has like little measurements. You can bend it, form it, shape it, and uh, anything here it's pretty cool so we got that for measuring wires and of course i got this really cool uh, 100 watt glue gun i haven't tried it out yet it's supposedly really good the reviews on amazon pretty good so fingers crossed that it's not a piece of crap it seems to be pretty solid i do like the construction of it pretty heavy so yeah i'm definitely excited about getting to use these two things here always like getting new tools but yeah, I had one of these bendy rulers before, but I don't know where it went to. I guess I lost it in a move or something, but yeah, they are they come in, they are super useful, especially if you're doing wiring harnesses like this. So however, I'm gonna have to take a brief hiatus on doing the wiring harness because I have to get the other printer up and running here. It's always a struggle. <laughs> one of the nozzles keeps jamming up. I think it's just because I'm using this right nozzle and it doesn't like it very much. I don't know why. But yeah, essentially the right nozzle's pretty much jammed. After some much needed finagling, the 3D printer is back in action. What I had to do was I just had to clear out the gear on the left hand side and lower the head. Basically what I'm doing here is I'm raising the head of the inactive side, which is the right apparent. I don't know what's going on with it. It has some jamming issues. I think the nozzle's clogged. I tried the filament cleaner and yeah, it was no dice, it just kept clogging, it wouldn't even, I couldn't even force it through, it was some sort of obstruction, so eventually I'll clean it out. What I'll probably do is I'll probably uh, eliminate it from the actual printer. I want to go ahead, I want to reduce weight on this printer, so I want to take off one of the extruders. Hopefully I, that's an easy thing, I can just, you know, snip some wires and whatnot or un unhook a few things fingers crossed because that would definitely help in its stability as well as uh, just not or prevent itself from shaking itself loose which it often likes to do so that's that for our current working printer let's go ahead and get back and uh, do a little bit of wire harness stuff work tonight all right so I'm gonna go ahead and demonstrate how I'm gonna be using this uh, bendy ruler here essentially you just contour it along where you want to measure you can do it like it's really cool for doing like stuff in engine bays, all sort has all sorts of cool applications here. I got this extra long 40 inch one, so what you do is when you reach the end here, so right at about 37 inches, of course, let's see here, so right down here is about 40, you always want to kind of round up whenever you're doing this, just ever so slightly, about like an inch or so, you can get pretty, uh, pretty precise. That's another 25, so let's see here, that'll be 65. And from there, it's just straight shot, so yeah, you don't need to worry about any straight rulers or foot angling around. Okay, so yeah, it looks like, okay, so I'm at 13, and of course, I'm going to measure this existing wire, so pretty easy with this stuff here. Let's do this, I'm about 39 looks like, give or take. I'm going to cut them out. 40 inches of wire each side here. Get my solder thing out of the way for now so I'm cutting the links. All right, so that'll be our hot end electrical there. And let's measure one of our, these uh, pre-labeled thermocouplebeelies. That is actually slightly smaller. Hmm. I wonder, are these longer? 
just slightly. Okay, cool. That actually works out perfectly. We're one inch off, but it's, I think that we get like an extra inch with this cable here. And of course, that's when I round it up. So I think we'll be fine with this bit here. So there we go, all right. We have our cables properly laid out. It's easy as that, especially with this, this ruler makes everything so much easier when trying to determine the length. I'm gonna go ahead and get to soldering that there that you saw in the last episode of how to solder these guys. All right, folks, so I have started doing more um, or wiring on the bed here. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and put flux on these points. That is actually way too much. So the tricky part about this is I have to cement these down really good because they are going to be fighting gravity. And of course, they're very thick and heavy wires comparative to the actual, uh, or what's usually used for these things here. So you want to use pretty thick wires for the bed, especially for one of this size here. A lot of people fail to do that, and of course, things start catching on fire. And yeah, it's never really too good, especially when this thing's already heat hot enough to, you know, boil water, essentially. I'm gonna tend these up. There are, there's a little bit of solder on them, but it is old solder. You always wanna put fresh solder on a joint like this here. I'm gonna go ahead and tend this. And get some more solder on my tip, just so I can bond these guys proper. Okay, that's actually pretty solid right there. And as always, between wires, if you see some crud on your soldering iron tip, go ahead and just scrape it off. Don't sponge it. Use the brash, brass, brass, brass steely, brush steely, little tongue twisters. Use some tricky hand maneuvering on this guy. I'm gonna eventually tape them with some Kapton tape once I get them set proper. So now we're gonna get some Kapton tape. I'll link this in the description for Amazon here. It's um, quite a pain. I usually use a razor blade to separate it from itself and it still doesn't really go properly. Hmm. Kapton tape, it's pretty heat resistant. You don't wanna use like hot glue and you definitely don't want to use like any sort of regular tape. Grill tape works okay too. Um, I'm not sure the conductive properties of grill tape, so I'd be cautious about that at least. Okay, so gonna need a little touch of detail. Basically, this is to uh, reduce strain on this here Kapton tape. Just gonna go ahead and get a zip tie. Finally, we need the thermosistor, which will sit in the bot, the middle of the print bed. I'm gonna make sure this gets as solid as the contact as I can get it. There we go. Don't want it bobbing or moving around or anything, of course. Always make sure to properly thread your wires. You wanna make sure you're not tangling up any wires with each other. So I'm just gonna put that right there. I'm probably gonna put another one here just to prevent it from wiggling around at all. I'm gonna go ahead and fire up this hot glue gun here. As you can see near the end, LEDs. Whoa, that was quick. 100 watts glue gun, freaking awesome. What I need to do is kind of scrape off this crappy failed adhesive portion there and hot glue it where that is. So yeah, just sticker. Yeah, this thing is pretty awesome, not gonna lie. Pretty accurate control too, like the, the trigger works really well, like it doesn't like snap, or the glue sticks thick enough to where it doesn't like bend or bow too much, which is awesome. Doesn't smell like it's about to catch on fire, so that's a plus. There we go, got the LEDs installed proper. So now, on our to-do list, we have to extend the wires with the stepper motors, or install the printer bed, and find an engineer some sort of way to get the sides working proper. But yeah, this, uh, this glue gun, it is S, I don't know if you can see that proper because of lack of light, S-O-A-I, SOE, I guess. Works pretty well, there's like a jillion of them like that on Amazon, but this one came with 10 of these huge sticks, which seemed to, you know, last quite a while. Put the link in the description. Well, all right, folks, it has been an awesome vlog here, but I am pretty tired. I'm about to hit the hay once I get a little snack in me. And um, yeah, it's been pretty, Pretty good block and got a lot of progress done here tonight. I am definitely excited to get this project closed up here. I'm super excited about these new tools I got. I love these things here. Um, I have been missing this tool and this hot glue gun 
the soy water, however you pronounce it, I'll put the link in the description. It is the best hot glue gun I've ever used, and for 20 bucks, with kind of the tinny's little sticks, you cannot go wrong with it. I want to thank you for watching. If you like the video, go ahead and hit that like button, and consider subscribing if you haven't already, and check out some of our other videos there as well, and have a good day.